We're back to the Education Celebrity Show on the Education Network, TotalTutor.net for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, the Beach Lifestyle Celebrity Segment. And always excited to have Lisa Gibbons back on the show. Uh, we had such a fantastic conversation last time. She's promoting a big event coming up, a webinar. So I thought, hey, let's go and uh, talk to Lisa and see how she's doing. So, Lisa, how are you? I'm doing really great, and I had a nice time talking to you before as well, so thanks for having me back on. Well, absolutely, and, and uh, as we know, all our times are moving and shaking. you got a lot of things going on, especially the success of the book. Now, New York Times bestselling author. I forgot to add that to your title in many, many ways, but really what's making you excited about is tomorrow, especially it'll air on all the syndication tomorrow, promoting, I guess, that day. So tell us a little bit about the webinar. I've been really blessed to be part of a project called Conversations in Caregiving. And we've been doing these these webinars that are open to anybody. They're free events that happen online. You just sign up and um, and actually participate at alzheimersdisease.com. And they're designed really to help answer your questions, give you support, give you access to experts and people who can help you navigate a really difficult time. You know, if you love someone who has Alzheimer's disease, if you are someone who has questions about it, if you're kind of struggling with, is this dementia, is it Alzheimer's, Um, I'm worried about myself or someone in my family, Um, this is the place that you want to be. And the great thing is um, you can enter your questions and we'll get them answered to the best that we can. You can also just go on the site and um, see the previous conversations in caregiving. We've done a couple of these before. You can go back and um, and watch those. And this one will also be live and also be archived at the site. It's just a great place to offer strength and support for people who are dealing with this thief of memories. And I know that's millions and millions of people. Oh, absolutely. And uh, um, doing this, you really see specifically what your organization and the organizations you're teaming up with have been able to help uh, families through these hard times, right? And having this opportunity to be able to ask questions and learn more is so important, isn't it? Well, this is all for family caregivers. You know, these are the people that that I call the family first responders. You know, these are the, the husbands and the wives and the sons and the daughters, and in many cases, the friends who are showing up every day for duty. And um, and sometimes it's pretty tough duty, and it can be isolating, and it can be sometimes um, really difficult because it's, um, you know, when people, when someone has Alzheimer's, they can't always tell you that you're making it better. Um, they can't always tell you what's wrong. So for caregivers, sometimes it can be like wandering through a bit of a maze. And um, it really does help to reach out and hold hands with others who've walked the path before. But it's funny, Neil, because our first instinct, mine was, when my mom first got diagnosed, and my mom and my grandma both died of this disease, and and I did what I think most people do, um, I denied. I was like, you know what? Mom's too strong. She's my rock. She's my anchor. Maybe she just drink it too much. You know, maybe she's just repeating herself because she's bored. I just pulled the covers up over my head and didn't want to see it. And that's normal because, it, you know, you get, you get kind of numb um, not wanting to look at the painful reality. But, the, but the, the real deal is the sooner you can name it and claim it, the more powerful you're going to be. Absolutely. And uh, getting them through this maze is so difficult because uh, could you imagine your loved one forgetting everything of the memories? It's, it's, it's so painful. And in a way, you have to kind of really let that person who's suffering not know that you're so hurt by it because it'll, it'll become worse and worse in the relationship and how to take care of them to remember that those memories are lost in ways and that ways to remind them even for a second is really important, isn't it? Yeah, that's part of what we're going to talk about um, at the at the live event, which again is happening on on Tuesday at eight o'clock Eastern time. Um, and you can you can just you know you can sign up right now at alzheimersdisease.com. dot com. You can join us at any time. You can go to the site at any time. It's just a free supportive site offering 
So, you know, em empowering educational services for caregivers, that's what we're for. But um, at the webinar, you're exactly right. What we'll be talking about is, um, you know, things to do to redirect behaviors, activities, ways to manage behaviors. Um, one of our, our experts will be Dr. Gary Small, who's a, um, a one of the authorities and professors at UCLA, and he's a, a well-known leader in this field. And uh, he's going to offer some of the insights that he has and things that have been proven to work well. Because, you know, families need you know, we don't have time. We don't have, uh, we're run, we run out of patience. We run out of time. We run out of money. Um, I always say this disease bankrupts spiritually and emotionally and financially. And, you know, you get to the end of your rope and then you're expected to keep hanging on. Well, you know, you can only tie a knot and hang on for so long by yourself. You know, you need somebody to be in the life raft with you. And so that's what, um, that's what my, as you know, because we've talked about it before, you and I, that's what my work has been all about with our nonprofit, at Lisa's Care Connection. You know, that's what we've tried to do is help encourage families, you know, give them ways to summon their strength and to, to call on their courage so they can be empowered in this journey and not be overwhelmed by it. Uh, it's very easy just to say, okay, this is not the life I ordered. This is not what I thought was going to happen in my happily ever after. And it's easy to get resentful. It's understandable that you're going to be angry about that. But as soon as you can say, okay, I'm going to walk off this stage and I'm going to embrace and try. I can't rewrite the beginning, but I can say, what, you know, what can I do right now to hit the reset button? And how can I reframe this experience to make it as good as I can from here on out? You know, what can I do to write this chapter and create a new ending? Because the, the beginning, I don't get to go back right. there. I can only start from here. And how, I'm sure through this uh, webinar, you're going to really kind of explain to families out there how to keep that, uh, I guess, to kind of jog the memory, even they're losing their memory, to make sure that they're treated well. They're treated with respect. It's not like they're a child. And, and Lisa, I know you've heard about this all the time where so many caregivers, because they just don't understand what's happening to, their, to their, their mom or their grandmother or their grandfather or their father, how they treat them. They kind of say, oh, well, now I guess they're just a child again. They don't remember things. And that's not the way to treat them, is it? Well, certainly there's a, um, a dignity issue that is and a respect issue that um, really does need to be honored. But there's a communication um, that has changed. And the way to communicate um, may be foreign to us because it's not necessarily on the same cognitive level that we're used to. But what you're talking about is exactly right. Um, you know, they, they, um, there is dignity that they, they do get embarrassed. And, um, and this, you know, a heart never forgets. And we are, as caregivers, we're responsible for what we bring into the room and what we bring to a relationship. And, um, you know, and we have to meet our loved one where they are in the disease state because they can't join us in our state. So it's up to us to figure out, okay, how do we understand what they're trying to communicate to us? You know, maybe this, is, maybe this means... Um, you know, when, they, when they're saying, um, if, they're, if they're at an assisted living facility and they're saying, I want to go home, or if they're in your living room and they're saying, I want to go home, and you're saying, but you are home, you are home, rather than trying to convince them you're home, you're home, Mom, but you're home, um, trying to figure out, um, you know, what, what do you love about your home, Mom? Tell me about home. And if you ask, tell me about home, your mom is probably really trying to say, I want to feel safe. I want to feel love. I want to feel connected. It doesn't mean anything about wanting to go to a physical place. It may mean that she's feeling scared. So if you can kind of come up with different questions and figure out what they're saying, then you can preserve that dignity and find a way to not speak down and, and belittle the person. But you're exactly right. It, it, and it's something I, I noticed from for my great-grandmother uh, before and the, and also my grandmother, the, you, you make the mistake to understand uh, they don't really get what we're talking about. Well, you don't treat them so w 
with disrespect. You don't treat them like, what are they talking about? Because there are things they still remember. There are things, and again, their short-term memory has not been, am I correct, has not been lost. It's more the long-term memory, correct? Often that is the case, and, you know, each case will be unique. But um, we found that some strategies that work, I talk about the power of the white lie. For example, um, you know, driving is a big thing for many Alzheimer's patients. They, they, it, it represents independence, as it does for all of us. And, um, but it's not safe many times for them to drive when they are disoriented and they can't get behind the wheel. So my mother would say, you know, I want to drive, I want to drive, and we found this to be a big struggle with her. And rather than fight with her about what she could not do, we would give her the keys and we would say, um, okay, Mom, well, the car's in the garage. And she would go take her purse and, you know, do all of her routine to get into the car, get her, her routine of getting her hair ready and, you know, everything all packed up to go. And then she would put the key in the ignition and the car wouldn't start because we had disabled the battery. And she would come in and say, something's wrong with the car. And we'd go, oh, you know what? We'll call somebody to come look at it. And then she would forget that the car was broken. Oh and the next time she would say, I want to go, I want to drive, we would say, okay, Mom, you can drive. And she would have the same process. So she would, we would never have to tell her she couldn't drive. And it was interesting because the same with she wanted to smoke cigarettes. And we finally realized we could give her the cigarettes. We just didn't give her a lighter. So she walked around with a cigarette that wasn't lit all day long. She was very happy. <laughs> so, Little things that you learn to do to preserve what they want and what you need to do to keep their safety. So you want to be creative in a lot of ways. And, 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 and through this process and learning more from experts like yourself that have become through different things, that you got to make it sure, make sure that it's still a situation. We, all, when we deal with our children in certain ways. We don't want to let them down, even if they don't really don't understand. You think of a two-, three-year-old, four-year-old, and they throw that temper tantrum. You don't want to belittle them because then they're going to remember that, however, and then they're going to be hurt by this. So you don't want a a scene, and you're able to still, he, she has that idea, she's going to go smoke that cigarette, or she's going to jump in that car, and it changes uh, the thought process, so she has, uh, thinks she's still in control, because as uh, my mom talks about all the time with, with my grandmother, that, it, again, being a child, it can become very draining for the caregiver, in a way, too. You know, the process of caring creates such compassion fatigue that often it starts the clock on subtracting 10 years from the life of the caregiver. That's how serious it is with the stress. So while you're trying to save the life and add years to the life of your loved one, you can, in fact, be subtracting years from your life. And that's why um, I wrote a book called um, Take Your Oxygen First. And this, this is the best advice I can give any caregiver is before you look after anybody else, it's imperative. The most loving thing you can do is to nourish yourself. And, you know, it, otherwise you are oftentimes failing faster than they are. And that's just the real story. Wow. It's, uh, it's, and, and, and that makes sense because I guess the caregivers get really drained out as well. I mean, as parents, we all know <laughs> we get drained. And just imagine if you're older and you're dealing with this kind of stress and it hurts you because the caregiver feels very hurt, right? Oh, mom doesn't remember. Well, and da- go ahead. Yes. And guilt, you know, guilt is your constant companion. And, you know, when we feel powerless, um, that's a very difficult place to be. And that's why... We come up with these experts that can give you tips and strategies and insights. We have um, words of wisdom from, you know, real people, you know, just like people listening to us right now, family members who are going through this at alzheimersdisease.com who talk about what worked for them. And I loved advice from one woman who mentioned going grocery shopping with her dad who had Alzheimer's disease. And she said that she talked to the store manager She would get a cart and do her family shopping. She would give her dad a cart. He wanted to be productive. She had a hard time keeping up with him while she had to run the errand. So he had his own list. He would go through and put things in his cart. When they were checking out, the manager knew that the items in dad's cart were not to be checked out. They were going to reshelve those items and restock them. 
but dad felt very proud that he had shopped, he contributed to the family, he had participated, and everybody was happy. And I think that's such a lovely, creative way that you can elicit your community. My dad used to take my mother with Alzheimer's out to dinner, and he had a little card that he would give the maitre d' or the hostess or the server that said, please be patient, my wife has a memory problem. And so that when she started acting inappropriately, which she often would, they would understand and um, they would just kind of all be in on it together. And those are just little things that, that make your life, um, make you less lonely and give you more of a team approach to managing. What is your hope from this webinar? What do you want to see people who do go to the website and, and register and participate in this learn from? What is your ultimate goal? I want people to feel that they have techniques, strategies, options, empowered, that they feel like they can do it, that they can not only survive, but they can thrive. You know, that they're going to be okay, that they're not alone, that it may seem so overwhelming and such a difficult burden, that's such a tough hand that they've been dealt. But they get to figure out how to play it and that we've got people available to help. And that's really all it is. You know, there's something about a community, and that's all this is. AlzheimerSDisease.com is just a community by caregivers, for caregivers, about caregivers. There's something about knowing that you belong with other people who really see you, who know what your journey is about, that feels very safe. And that's what I hope. That's my highest hope. Well, it definitely seems like your highest hope, and I, I know it's going to be definitely a success. For people, and one thing that's so amazing, Lisa, about having a nationally syndicated talk show, especially with the archives that stations keep playing over and over again, if they did miss this webinar, is there going to be an opportunity to re-listen to that again after the event takes place, or are there going to be more opportunities for them to get some of that information? At any time, if you go to alzheimersdisease.com, you can find all of our conversations in caregiving archived at the site, and you can participate. Just It's a free community just to join or just to, just to browse. Just, you know, if you're surfing the web and it's the middle of the night and you're just concerned or worried or lonely or curious, click through to alzheimersdisease.com and you'll find supportive information. You'll be able to see our archived conversations in caregiving. I just hope it feels like a blanket of support for people. Well, absolutely, Lisa. And this is one of the things I'm going to call out uh, all my syndicated networks out there to make sure that they feature this as a major feature because you're taking your time to come out and be on the show and really to promote it themselves on these radio stations and continue to promote your organization and webinars like this one because, I mean, all of us are going to have to deal with this someday. All of us are going to have to have that uh, that situation where a, a loved one's going to forget and how hurtful it's going to be. And to learn from these strategies and tidbits and things that your experts are able to bring to the table. And I consider you an expert as well after talking to you two times about what you firsthand have gone through uh, with a family member that ultimately we all need to check this out and listen to more to these strategies. So, Lisa, first of all, uh, wh- again, which website again for that information and to listen Alzheimer's live? Di- yeah. Alzheimer'sDisease.com is our website. It's a free website, and our webinar is live at 8 o'clock on Tuesday night Eastern Time. And also, I wanted to ask, Lisa, the success of your book. Where can we purchase your book? I'm, I'm sure you're, you're excited about that because it's kind of funny. We thought the second time you come on to talk about your book, but we'll have to set that up for another time. But uh, you're, 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 I'm sure you're extremely excited about the success of, of your, your book and being a New York Times bestseller, isn't it? It must be great. I was, I was so jazzed to make the New York Times bestseller list, and I think it really speaks to the fact that there are a lot of people who – want to, need to, or have to reinvent their lives. You know, Take Two was all about hitting the reset button on your life to create your own happy ending or new beginning. And it was really exciting for me to hear so many stories about 
how people did it. You know, they got fired and they started over. They got divorced and they were able to reset their lives. You know, they they gained weight or they lost confidence, whatever it was, you know, to have that realization that, oh, my gosh, I can give myself permission to begin again. And then to hear the stories of rebuilding and coming back stronger and brighter than ever before is just really, really the coolest thing. That's why I wrote the book, and um, that to me is just the most nurturing experience to connect, to be able to connect to yes. people who have found value in that. Uh, I mean, I just, I can't even tell you the biggest smile it puts on my face. I have just, I've had the best time with it. Well, absolutely, Lisa, and it's, it must make you really smile because, again, it's going to help so many people and the process of what you'll be able to do. But I know we can find all that information, purchase your book, and learn about all what you're doing with your TV show and all these things at your website. What is your website? LisaGibbons.com. You can find out about the book there. We now have the book. Um, the audio book is available. So that's interesting. Um, the first time I have done an audio book, because I did the audio version myself, which I really enjoyed. A lot of people asked me for it, so we did that. So it's available for, for Kindle, for audio download. Um, you can get it at Amazon, Books a Million, and everywhere else. So um, that's a take two. Okay, fantastic. And you can follow yourself on Twitter as well, and you have a Facebook fan page as well, correct? I would love it if, there, if everybody could... Um, Become part of our community. Um, I'm at Lisa Gibbons on Twitter. And um, and please do check out my Facebook page and leave me a comment. Tell me you heard the show, and um, let's connect. That would be absolutely lovely. Well, fantastic, Lisa. We'll have to have you back on in a, in a quarter and, uh, to kind of tell us what happened at your last event and help promote your next one. So thanks again for calling. Uh, my pleasure. Always fun to talk to you. I really appreciate the support, too. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Lisa. Okay, till next time. All right, take care. Okay, you're listening to Education Celebrity Show, and we'll be back in just a moment.